Yes, welcome back to the second sec the second segment. Second, let's say that twice. <laughs> the second segment of episode 94, Sold with Updike Pew. And this week, we are going to have a little bit of a continuation on what we talked about last mm -hmm. week, where last week we talked about how do you get ready to flip a home? Right, what are, what, are, what are things that you look for and talk about? And we know that uh, with the number of buyers in the market right now that are trying to take advantage of the interest rates that are out there, right. there's a tremendous number of flipped homes in our marketplace that buyers are going to evaluate. So yep. we just wanted to kind of talk through how do you evaluate purchasing a flipped home? You're right, because this is a critical time because you're really relying on someone else's handiwork um, to make sure that that's going to be up to your standard. Um, and so these are really important things. And I think one of the most important things that Jeff and I are always looking for um, is comps. Because what we want to do is make sure that that market can support what you're actually purchasing. Sometimes you want to stretch the, the market and you know that you'll be there for a longer amount of time. And so it's fine. But we still want to make sure that we're right in price. Right. Be and, go ahead. And there, and there are, you know, the... The many times the homes that have had a tremendous amount of renovation done on them will be the ones that are going to bring that highest sales Correct. price and the highest dollar per square foot for the neighborhood. But what we're trying to make sure when we run comps is we want to make sure that what we're not doing is that you're not paying for the um, flippers mistakes. So if they had a mistake with uh, drywall or they didn't have their stuff on mm -hmm. time and these elements that were errors that mm -hmm. they made whether that was their fault or not, yeah. that they're trying to pass on to you. So we really want to take and zero that down and look for those likes um, in the neighborhood. It's best if there are sometimes in those yeah. flip neighborhoods, it gets a little dicey because they're getting there first a lot of times. Uh, many times they are. You know, it's one of the things we always tell people is the pioneers make money. And if you're the one that's willing to right. live in the neighborhood, that is not the best neighborhood right away, but you're willing to live through that gentrification Many times you're the one that's going to come out the other side, really having done well owning that property. We have many clients, but I can think of Daniel and Omar, and they bought on Capital, mm -hmm. and they bought probably 11, 12 years ago. And I won't tell you what they paid for it, but it would shock you, and it would be even more surprising what it's worth today. Yeah. It is. But they were one of the first. Yep. So always check comps. That is our that is the place we start when we're talking to buyers about buying a flipped home in a neighborhood is, you know, let's figure out what how that how that house is priced into that neighborhood and so what's the next thing that we want to watch because this is one that not everybody thinks about right so the 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 second big thing that you want to do your realtor should do we always do mm -hmm. uh, is check for open permits on the property so that doesn't make sense to a lot of people so what does that mean an open permit so when um, so let's take the city of dallas for example the city of dallas really I mean, if you're changing out wallpaper, the city of Dallas wants you to pull a building permit for it because it generates revenue for them. But especially if they're plumbing work, electrical work, things like that, uh, the city of Dallas issues a permit. And then when the work is done, the city of Dallas inspector comes back, signs off on everything and gives a green tag. And once that green tag is done, that permit is closed. Correct. But if the, the, the person who's done the flip didn't call for that green tag or didn't wrap all of that up, you as the new homeowner become responsible for wrapping all of that up. And, you know, we've had lots of experience where a, a homeowner called us after they bought it for sale by owner or, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and didn't take this step in it. And they're the one that's left with having to, to resolve that issue. And it can be expensive. And it's yeah. a pain yeah. and it can actually prevent you from getting other work done because say something else that you need to have done requires a permit and you go to pull that and the city can say, eh, eh, we need to get these closed firsthand. Yeah. So this is a big step. And then the next thing we want to talk about is inspections. Mm -hmm. Inspections are huge They are when it comes to this. Yeah, we have, we have a couple of really good inspectors that we work with that we have loved to work with for a long time. And um, the, the good thing that I will, I, and there's lots of great inspectors there out there, but the, the thing that I think we like most about when we work with Chris uh, is that uh, Chris is a realist. He understands what it takes to do renovation on a property Correct. because he's done it before. But he's also a realist in knowing that you're not going to be able to take a 1950s home and make it automatically 2020 code compliant. So he's very good about helping you see the quality of the work that was done and evaluating it, you know, is that really, do you know what level you're buying? Right. 
And inside of those inspections, that's something that it happens with all homes when they're purchased. But there's a lot of times these homes are probably older because they are a flip. And sometimes there's deferred maintenance that is not cosmetic. Mm -hmm. And so what we really encourage people to do is have that plumbing really looked at. And plumbing lines that would be really important would be your fresh water and your sewer to have them both scoped and either a hydrostatic pressure test done if necessary. Yes. And the, and the the hydrostatic test is really critical, mostly critical on properties where you've had foundation work done. Mm -hmm. Because many times, if, even as a home has settled in and, and foundation movement has occurred, the plumbing system may have moved with right. it. But then when the foundation work is done, that's more of an abrupt move. And in many instances, it can cause plumbing cracks, plumbing breaks that one doesn't necessarily see the results of. Yeah, and it's not fun. Yeah, it's not, not fun. fun at all. Mm -mm. Um, HVAC systems are another big thing, and this is just as important if it's a brand new system or if it's a 20 year old system. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times these brand new systems always don't get hooked up the right way, do they? That's true. They, they're many times they're, um, they're, they're, they, it's always good to have them evaluated by an outside person, somebody Correct. that's un, unbiased and kind of not, not attached to the, the transaction itself. And then one of the other things that we'd like to point out, and this is really, um, this is very interesting because it's more of a psychological, emotional thing, but people can get super wrapped up on the way that a house looks when yeah. it's staged. And they think that the colors are all right. And they think that the furniture is perfect. And I came from new home sales and they would spend hundreds of thousands of dollars decking these houses out because people eat with their eyes and make decisions based on emotions. Mm -hmm. And so if Jeff and I can tell you anything, it is to step away from that transaction with those emotions and let he and I make this happen. And then once it's a go, then you get all emotional. Mm -hmm. But it's so important. Yeah, it's, it's you really have to detach like the the stuff that's in the house from what's the house going to look like when all of that's gone? <laughs> what's the best thing that you always tell people about negotiating? Um, the best position to be negotiating from is walking away. Mm -hmm. And it's true. Mm -hmm. It is it such is true. true. And then we have one more point that we want to bring up. Yeah, and it's uh, always get paint numbers, tile samples, any of that information that you can about the work that was done and the, the, the products that were used on it because when it comes time that to repaint, right. uh, even if it's touch up or whatever, and if you really like that paint color and you want to try to match it, that only really the way to do it is to have the paint number. And not all whites are the same. Yes, that's very true. <laughs> so that's scary. Very, very true. So, well, we hope that makes sense to you. Um, we would love to help and show you through some of these um, firsthand. Give us a call. Let us know. Reach out through us through the information on this site, or you can call us at 214-377-2223. Absolutely. So very cool. Thanks for joining us today. We appreciate spending your uh, lunchtime on Wednesday with you. And remember, we want to be your realtors for life.